We are recording. Okay. I call this meeting as the chair. I call this meeting to order pursuant to the to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by Zoom or by telephone <clears throat> or uh, via or via www.amherstma.gov. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. I call this meeting to order. Okay, and at this time, the town of Amherst is recording this meeting as stated before. If anyone else is doing so at this time, please notify me now. Do we have anyone in the gallery right now? We no. do not. Okay, so hearing none, um, we will move on to public participation, which we don't have any currently, so we'll leave that open for now. Um, let me share my screen with you all. Um, nope, that's not the one. There it is, I think. Okay. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay. So here is the minutes from our meeting on November 17th. Um, any comments, questions? Lee? Or no questions. All right. Uh, no questions for me either. Um, I move that we accept the minutes uh, provisional to some uh, 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 pending some comment from Ken, if Ken has anything to say about them. Okay. All right. Second. All those Second. in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. okay, so we can come back to those when Ken joins us. Um, Moving on, here we have some excise abatements. So you will see there are three years here for the week of 1114 through 1130. In 2020, we have one excise abatement totaling $69.83. In 2021, we have two abatements totaling $100.29. And in 2022, that is calendar year, um, we have 15 abatements totaling $1,533.94 for a total of $1,704.06, again, for the week of 1114 through 1130. I move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Next on our list here, we have a lien for Chapter 61A. Um, this lien, I believe, Teresa, was a sale of this parcel, so we're just updating the ownership. Mm -hmm. um, Coles had purchased this par par excuse me, this parcel on uh, Map 9, D as in dog, Lot 26. There are 25 acres, plus or minus, of which all will be classified under chapter 61A. So meaning they will be farming this parcel um, to some nature. This so- new, This new or did we touch, did we start to discuss this last meeting? No, this is new from last meeting. Um, this, is, this is new. We did not talk about this last time. Okay. Yep, yep. So basically what we're asking here is for um, the, um, Coles is going to farm this, this piece of property. So we're asking for you to agree that, that they will do so and to give them the discount of chapter 61A, depending on what exactly they're doing. Um, and by that, I mean, are they, are they um, haying the field? Are they having field crops? Are they doing tobacco? So on and so forth, uh, which they will notify us on their application each year of what exactly they're doing. Um, so this is just recording the lien at the Registry of Deeds, stating that the town has the first right of refusal um, and stating that they understand the um, application process, the lien, the rollback tax, so on and so forth. I'm just curious, where is this parcel? This parcel is, hold on one second. I don't see that we put that on there. Uh, 90, 26. It is located on Northeast Street. Um, I believe it's a landlocked piece of property. Oh, it is. Okay. And this, uh, this, has this been in 61A before? It has. Yes. The previous owner, um, oh, so the, the, so. the 
previous owner was, I'm not even going to try to say their last name because I don't want to botch it. <laughs> um, but yes, it was previously farmed um, for many, many years, it, it looks like. So they just um, have, Coles has purchased this parcel um, to, to continue farming. Okay, I, I move the um, recording of this um, lien um, um, at the Registry of Deeds under our signatures. Second. All so of, you guys will have to come in to, and sign that. All three of us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, so again, um, each board member will have to come into the office to sign that. Um, so will Ken have to come into if he's not here or how does that work? Yes. Oh, yes. Because we have put him on the um, see down here um, as a um, as a member of the board. So he will have to come in as well. Right. Um, hopefully he will be on shortly and then we can just review these these items with him. Uh, otherwise. Um, he can he can take a look at them when he comes in to sign, I guess. Um, okay, so um, next piece of paperwork. Sorry, there's a little bug in my face. Um, next piece of paperwork that you received was just a copy of the clause uh, 41C um, requirements. Uh, so you'll see the assets and income. This is something that we will be discussing in executive session um, following the um, 17D as well. So those were just... Uh, so that you guys could have them. And, and if need be, when we go into executive session to look at these, I can certainly open those up and share them with you again as well. And just, um, one, just one question in case somebody actually comes up and actually looks at the YouTube video of this. Sure. Uh, uh, do these numbers get updated periodically? Yes. Yep. So every year the state sends us uh, the multiplier so that we can figure out how to increase these. Um, I've never seen it decrease. Um, I imagine at some point it's a possibility. I'm sorry, I have a little bug flying in my face. Um, it, it's probably possible for it to go down, but I've never seen so they're that up, happen. They're updated every year. Yes. Oh, so you get a, you get it. You receive a formula from the state. Yes. All right. Yep, and then we update the income and the assets. And, and, this, um, and this gets published on the website. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes, and there was some discrepancy um, last meeting as to what the for, you know which which page to look at. I think there was a spot where last year's um, information had not been updated. That has since been updated, so the website should reflect this page exactly, um, as well as this page here for the clause seventeen D. Um, now, this one I don't. This one doesn't update as as much as um the the clause 41c uh asset limitation has been set at 40,000 for quite some time i believe um but again if it was to update the the state would be sending us that information and they do periodically do that um i don't know if they have a specific timeline as to when they do that or do they if they just sort of wait to see um you know where inflation and where where people's wages are um but that one does not update yearly do we have a range of choices as uh, among the do the munis, do the municipalities have range a range of choices as to what uh, what the exemptions are going to be? Somewhat. Um, so we in Amherst here we've adopted as much as we possibly can at this point for our seniors. Um, so this particular exemption can be uh, as low as one seventy five um, as as what the person would receive. On the, off their taxes. Here in Amherst, you'll see that it is um, $298. Um, so you will, you will see that um, this, we've adopted to be able to get up to that amount. Um, so, and then going back to the, um, the clause 41C, I just wanna say hello to Ken. Hello, Kim. Sorry uh, about that. That's okay. Okay, um, so what, what we're going over right now is just the exemption page uh, sure. qualifications for the seniors. Um, so we just, just explained that um, these figures are updated each year and that Amherst has adopted to be able to 
give most the most money to the seniors who qualify. Um, so what I was stating was that the um, clause 17 D does not update the in the asset limitations every year. Um, that is something still that the state gives us, but we do give up to $298 rather than the 175 that the clause is set at from the state. Um, I just want to cut in because I think that 298 is wrong. I think it's 319 now. Okay, so we I should just, update that. We need to update that one. That's. I thought that that was all updated. So just to reiterate again, this 298 that I highlighted in red is actually 315. Is that what you said? 319, I believe. $319. So, so the citizen who would qualify for this would get $319 off of their taxes. It says, it says town meeting. Shouldn't that be town council? Mm -hmm. Uh, he, mm -hmm. Yes, that mm -hmm. should be town council. Although has has town council addressed these in any way? Uh, I think um, have a sneeze, but it went away. <laughs> um, town council did. Um, they did address these when we first voted to be able to accept this clause to increase that um, amount. Um, they don't have to vote on it each year. They just have to vote to say yes, we want to increase that amount. Um, overall, based on the state figures. So you have a you have um, you have some way of um, remembering to remind the council to vote on this on this. Topic. So we don't. They only have to vote on it one time. So they have to vote to actually accept this clause with the particular increases every year from the state. You believe so maybe that? maybe Kim, you should take out the word recent, just per a decision at yes. town council. Agreed. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, and then back up to the uh, 41C here, these, these figures are updated each year. Uh, and again, the, the council had, and again, I think we should take out the word recent. Um, we have adopted to be able to increase this. Normally this exemption is um, up to a thousand dollars. Some small towns in Massachusetts still have it set back at 750. Um, but Amherst has adopted the 1000 plus the ability to increase it up to $2,000. Um, um, so, so we um, have really um, adopted as much as we possibly can to give the seniors as much as we possibly can. So, so it increases on a pre existing person who's qualified. Correct. So if you qualify each year and you apply each year, you can get up to $2,000. However, if you some for some reason, um, miss a year, then you'd have to start back at the thousand dollars. Or if you, um, if for some reason income has increased and then it decreased again, and you would qualify for this, then again, you would have to start back at the thousand. But if you are um, applying each year and receiving the exemption each year, you can get up to two thousand dollars. So we have maxed out on the exemptions here. That's correct. For state law. Yes. I guess. I guess this. This one's not exactly clear, because um, if I was reading this as an elderly person, which I am, I would think that I only get $1,000 off my tax bill, because that's what the title says. Yes, and so um, we we have to leave these forms somewhat. We can't we can't modify them too much based on state regulations. Um, so so it is sort of a nice surprise when they come in and we say, you know, next year you'll receive more. Um, this is also something that I will be bringing to the senior center with me on Thursday to discuss. And so it will be put out to them that it starts at a thousand dollars and then increases, assuming that, um, you would continue to, uh, to apply and qualify. So it is, it's a minimum of a thousand basically is what this is saying. And what time is that meeting at the senior center? 11. Well, why don't we say minimum of a thousand off your tax bill? I mean, um, I, we, can. we can. Yeah, this just us uh, communicate. Uh, mm -hmm. Where does it say I can get two thousand? It doesn't, it doesn't say anywhere. that on here. Um, it says that we've adopted this figure and it may increase by up to a hundred percent more, which is right here. Yeah. Um, but I don't understand why I, the first year I can't get two thousand. So the first year you qualify, you get a thousand, and then each year thereafter, um, it increases by the amount that your your assessment increases. Um, so you can get up to a thousand dollars, excuse me, up to two thousand dollars over time. And again, that's assuming that you continue to qualify and apply 
each year. And that depends on you, whether or not your assessment goes up or down. If, it, if your assessment goes down, it probably, you know, like if you got, say you got 1500 the previous year, your assessment went down <laughs> and your assessment went down by 50 bucks, that exemption would go down by 50 bucks. Boy, this is confusing. <laughs> Good, good luck keeping track of this, Teresa. <laughs> Teresa has a very nice spreadsheet that's very easy to I mean, follow. <laughs> so is this, I mean, the state made it this confusing. Um, I'm sorry, Ken, Ken, you're surprised by this now? I guess so. <laughs> I'm surprised you think it's just because. Say, hey, you yeah. can get down, you can give up to $2,000 if you want to and do it. I mean, and that's basically what they've done. Um, so it's, you no, know, you can't with a lot of strings attached right i can't get it the first year can't and i and i have to many years before i can get 2000 right right yeah you you get more elderly and you get uh you could potentially get more of an exemption that's how it works yeah so I just want to go back, Ken, um, very quickly, just to sure. show you what we discussed before, just to make sure that okay. you're um, on the same page as us before we get into the assessor update. Um, oh. Here we have the um, classification, excuse me, the, the lien for a classified property in Chapter 61A. Um, this parcel was just recently sold to WD Coles. Um, it's located on Northeast Street, and it has been being farmed for many, many years. So we're just updating the ownership on the lien. Um, okay and recording that at the registry of deeds. So that was uh, um, voted and approved by the fellow members. Okay. Um, and then also just- So you actually released the lien on the previous owner then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think we I think we did that um, a couple of meetings ago. Okay. Um, and so this just quickly was our excise abatements um, for 2020, 2021, and 2022 for 1114 through 1130 totaling um, $1,704.06. And then we just wanted to make sure that you were comfortable with our um, minutes from our last meeting, which was November 17th, and that you didn't have any questions or comments that you wanted to add to that. No, all set. Thanks. Kim, okay, for wonderful. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen and I will give you our assessor update uh, before we go into executive session um, and before we schedule our next meeting. Um, so basically what's been happening uh, in the office is that we've done a successful test run of our tax bills. So that means that our database that we use every day in the assessor's office matches when we put it into our billing file. So we have um, a successful run. Our CPA tax was calculated correctly and our uh, water and sewer liens that may have been added to any parcels came through and were done correctly. Um, we are going to do one more test run this week just to make sure just once again that everything works and we're going to just test out a different way to enter the personal exemptions that might make it easier on our office. Whether or not we actually um, do that, implement that this year, or we wait till next year will sort of depend on the outcome of this next test round that we're going to do tomorrow or Thursday or both. Um, but successful test help the, Your office or the collector's office? Um, the, the new addition would help our office. Um, currently, what we do now is um, once we get all these exemptions approved, um, Teresa hangs on to them. And then once the bills are actually in the billing system, and ready to be printed, she has to hand enter every single abatement, print out the abatement certificate, um, and mail those all out. Doing it this, once we test this and see how it works, what we can do is we still have you approve all of these uh, exemptions, and then we put them into Munis into a, like a holding folder. Um, so she can immediately send out the notification to the uh, taxpayer saying that they were approved for this exemption. And then um, what will happen is when I put the file into the billing system, I can click a button and it will add those exemptions right into the Ooh, parcels. That's so correct. much, much simpler, a lot less paperwork, a lot less time. Go for um, it. So it would help Teresa and um, yeah. you know, just move smooth. But again, we want to make sure that it's going to be a smooth transition to that instead of just trying to run with it. So, um, you know, 
it may or may not happen this year. And depending on the outcome of that test run, it may or may not happen at all or right away. So um, we have an excise commitment that is being processed right now. So that will be being mailed out in the next couple of weeks. So you will see that in our next meeting. Um, and then we're just wrapping up our end of the calendar year things that we need to get finished before the tax bills get mailed out. Um, basically just getting ready for the, the printing of the tax bills. We do help the collectors with stuffing those envelopes and getting those ready to be mailed. Uh, I think the goal is to send them out um, either the, the week of Christmas, so people get them after Christmas or the week after Christmas. I'm not sure that we've totally nailed down a date yet there, but but the end of the month, um, last final date for them to be mailed before we have to have them all due on May 1st would be December 31st. So they have to be postmarked and at the post office by close of post office that day. Um, so, but we're in very good shape to not have to worry about that at all. So, um, and then the uh, last thing I wanted to mention again was that senior discussion. Um, it's gonna be Thursday at the Bang Center at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, it will be an in-person discussion. I don't know if they will be also doing a Zoom version so that it can be um, recorded on uh, the town YouTube or, or how that exactly that's working. I haven't spoken to Haley about that, but I do know that it is certainly in person. And um, we'll just be discussing our options for exemptions for um, seniors, blind, veteran, um, deferrals, hardships, basically everything that we have available to our residents. Um, so hopefully there'll be some good discussion on that as well. That's great. I'd be curious on feedback next meeting of how many people participated. Sure, yeah, I can I can try to make note. A rough, um, a rough idea. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, this is something that, you know, can potentially be done year after year. What I'd also like to do is try to pull in some of our veterans um, so that they're aware. I don't know exactly how many veterans we have here in Amherst, but I want to make sure that if they're a veteran and at least 10% disabled due to their service, um, then that at, I want them to know that they're eligible for an exemption. Um, and that's the minimum requirement is to be have a 10% disability that's related to your service. Um, and there's, you know, it goes farther and we can get more in depth with that at some point as well. But um, I just want to share that with them and make sure that they're aware uh, that they can receive that if they own property in town uh, and it, and they reside at that property. Okay. So, and you're coordinating with the vet, veterans? Rep. I will eventually do that as well. Um, right now, we just focus on the seniors, um, but I, I do plan to do some more work with the veterans office um, and make sure that, you know, like I said, they the veterans are aware of the services that we give to them. Um, and, and I'd love to be able to do a presentation or, um, you know, something for them as well, that uh, whatever Steve thinks is the best option, whether it be a Zoom thing or whether it be an in-person um, here in Amherst or if they have a, an office in Northampton, because I know he also works out of Northampton. Um, I prefer that it be here because it's for our residents. But, um, you know, if he has a large space in Northampton that's that our residents go to, um, you know, I want to make sure that they have that information there as well. And it's the same statewide, so it doesn't yes. matter. <clears throat> he comes to Amherst. It doesn't matter where they live. Right, right, he, yeah, right. So they, I mean, any town would get these same requirements. Um, again, it's at least 10% disabled. And then depending on your disability, um, depends on the amount of money that you would receive. Um, and also, if you are a widow of a veteran, uh, if that veteran passed due to their service, uh, connected disability, then you would receive a full exemption on your taxes forever as long as you don't remarry. So um, it sounds like we do have one person that could potentially qualify for that. And Steve was going to look into that and get back to me um, here in Amherst. So yeah, he wow. comes to Amherst, I think at least one day a week. At least one day a week. Yeah. And I think he um, he goes over to the bank center. So I'm hopeful right. to get uh, in contact with him and have some sort of um, meeting with, with the veterans. Remind us, is what's the due date for these exemptions? So the personal exemptions are due no later than April 1st of each calendar year. And then, of course, depending on when you get them into us, um, if you get them in early enough, we can get them applied to both February and May. 
But if they come in on April 1st, then we can get them applied to your May bill that year. Um, assuming that you're going to qualify again, then you hopefully would get it in earlier next year and we can apply it to both February and May. And is that the same? That's the same for veterans too? Yes, that's all personal exemptions. All personal. Okay. Yep. And um, my understanding is you're saying the town council's done everything they can to increase the limits within the state parameters. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, so next thing on the agenda would be to schedule our next meeting. So looking at our calendar, um, we're looking into January and I think we can go back to Thursdays. I think this was just a special um, occasion meeting so that we could get these exemptions processed before the tax bills go out, um, but not opposed to changing the day if, if there's a better day that works for everyone. Thursday works better for me. I forgot all about it today. Okay. <laughs> Good thing I emailed you thinking the meeting was at nine, right? <laughs> um, okay, so we have the 5th, the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th of January. I propose the 12th. That's good for me. Okay. Lee, that works for you as well? That works. Okay. All right. So we will put January 12th, and, you, and we're good with the 930? Yes. No. Okay. Okay. So our next scheduled meeting will be January 12th at 9.30 a.m., pending everyone is still able to make it. Um, otherwise, we will uh, rearrange that schedule when we get a little closer. Um, so when we go into executive session, uh, I guess before I get there, is there anything else that we want to talk about in the public section? Okay, hearing none. Uh, when we go into executive session, we plan to discuss personal exemptions and we do not plan to return to the public section. Um, so I just wanna reiterate that our next scheduled meeting will be January 12th at 9.30 a.m., which is a Thursday. And we will continue on with the Thursday schedule so long as that works for everyone. All right. Um, so and I'm, then- I move to go. I move to go in an executive session for the sole purpose, as you stated, um, to re to re to review personal exemptions. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And again, we do not plan to come out of executive session back into public. It will, the meeting will end in executive session. <laughs>